We return to the Kalos region once again, and Go receives one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. What a beautiful day! Pokemon Ranger, I choose you! What's up, Mighty Boys and Guts? It's your Ranger Boy here, and welcome to another review of Pokemon Journeys. In this week's episode, we once again make the return to the Kalos region with episode 56, Wickstrom of the Elite Four, the Hall of Chivalry. And as the title implies, we not only return back to Gen 6, but we also will be facing one of the Kalos Elite Four. So how exactly will this turn out? Well, if you want to know more, if you want to know, my opinion. Then grab some popcorn, grab some cookies, and let's do this. We start off with some intensity with our two main protagonists doing a fencing exhibition with leaks. And even though Go doesn't really understand the meaning behind all this, Ash thinks that this is a great method to get stronger together with his Galarian Farfetch'd, who also has been shown honing his skills. Fortunately enough, Elite Four member Wickstrom of Kalos is organizing some kind of test of strength event where trainers and Pokemon can show their skills in numerous challenges. And naturally, both Ash and Farfetch are eagerly looking forward to it. But not only those two are all fired up, but also Go and his trusted partner... Cypher? Uh, okay, serious question here. When was the last time we actually saw this Pokemon? I honestly do not remember, and it seems like that even Go himself is self-aware about neglecting this Pokemon. So instead of Cinderus, he takes Cypher alongside with him. So off we go to the France-based region, and to be more specific, to the Castle of Chivalry, where Wickstrom has already been waiting for the participants to arrive, greeting them with a mix of intensity, which you naturally expect from one of the strongest trainers in Carlos, but also a surprising amount of slight out of character cheesiness, with him almost crying every time he sees the potential of the boys. But now it's time for the test of chivalry, to earn the knight medals, which consists of three tests. Test number one, our heroes running 10 laps around the castle while equipped with heavy armor while also having to overcome the magnetic powers of Wickstrom's Probo Pass. Test number two, Ash and Go having to find their way out of the maze, and while being trapped in the maze, both boys have been separated from each other. Although we see Go overcoming some obstacles we mostly concentrate on Ash and Farfetch, which ends up in Ash getting nuzzled by Dedenne. Man, seeing that Pokemon brings the feels. I miss Dedenne. And Bonnie and Clement. And Serena. God damn it, I miss all of them. Nearly getting attacked by Hornetch, solving a dead end situation by basically breaking the walls down, drink it in, man, and nearly falling into a deadly pitfall. And during all that, despite Wickstrom being very impressed by Farfetch's overall power, he quickly makes the remark that it hasn't achieved true power yet, aka basically the same problem Ash's Pokemon had against Gallade. Until Farfetch showed some other elements of his character after Ash jumped into the pitfall to get back Farfetch's leak, therefore showing signs of shame. Chivalry. Test number three. The last test consists of a 1v1 match between the participants versus the Elite Four member to obtain the key. So not only does that mean Aegislash Slash against Farfetch and Cypher, which Wickstrom's Pokemon handled with ease, even with two Pokemon attacking at the same time, but also Adult Wickstrom having a semi-serious sword fight against Ash and Go. An adult having a sword fight with two little boys really doesn't sound right here. The solution? The usual but very effective splitting up tactic of Go going for the key while Ash's team is distracting the enemy. Throughout the battle we see a change in character within Farfetch because instead of focusing on defeating his enemy with pure strength alone, just like he usually does, he decides to protect Ash even after being injured. And after receiving such growth in character, he also learns Detect, which he uses to not only avoid Aegis Slash's attack, but also to land a critical blow to it. But before he can deliver another final Final hit, the competition suddenly ends after Go retrieved the key. Our boys received the Medal of Knights for their hard work, and as an extra cherry on top, Wickstrom decides to trade Pokemon with Go so that Go can obtain my second favorite Pokemon of all time, Scizor. Awesome! So that's the end of the episode, and without any more assertion, let's go right to my ratings. And yes, I said ratings because I kinda feel like it. Anyway, what can I say about the story? In my opinion, this is a very clear-cut story which had a solid beginning, solid middle, and a solid end. AKA Ash and friends going to Carlos to face the test that Wickstrom had to offer, then they overcome all these obstacles, and at the end of the day, everyone has gained something 
coming from this. Ash has gained a new move with Detect, Farfetch gained some more depth for his character, and Go gained a brand new Pokemon. Before I go to my nitpick, let's talk about the good things in this episode. Galarian Farfetch's overall development as a character. After just being showcased as this battle-hungry Pokemon who wants to overcome everything with brute strength alone, we slowly but surely saw a change within the Pokemon, which began during him and Ash getting trapped in the maze and ended up with him throwing all of his past priorities like battle and strength away and instead he tried to save Ash, showing a lot of courage and readiness to help others. And with that newfound characteristic, he found new ways of reaching new heights. Great storytelling from both sides. But as solid as Ash and Farfetch were, go side of the story, I will be honest, it was really not good. Sure, having a scissor is freaking amazing and having this Pokemon, one of my all time favorites in a team of a main character is something I always wanted. But I would have been able to appreciate this Pokemon and its evolution more if it was more established in the anime, hell, if it actually had relevant screen time and development so that we as the viewers can actually get behind it. Just ask yourself this question, when was the last time we actually saw this Pokemon having major interactions with the main character or the story? When was the last time Go used him in battle? I I don't know the answers for that and neither does Go, since the man, the myth, the legend catcher himself stated that he hasn't used this Pokemon in a long while. And that's because when it comes to story and character development, Go focuses on either Cinderace or Sobble and nearly always sweeps the other Pokemon aside. And if a main character doesn't use a Pokemon and therefore doesn't really care about that Pokemon's progress and he recognizes that then why should we? Why should we care about an evolution of a Pokemon if we barely know him? As a result of that, the evolution feels rushed and poorly handled. And overall, no one really can get behind it. So to sum it up, Ash's side of the story was very good, but Go's side was handled very poorly and rushed, which sadly is not the first time, and because of that I had to cut off some major points, which leads to a still very good score of 8 out of 10. What can I say about the focus? Vickstrom of the Elite Four, the Hall of Chivalry, and with that, you basically know what the episode is all about, introducing the Carlos Elite 4 into the main anime by showcasing his character and skills which has been done really well and that Ash and Go have to overcome this force. The second part not only concentrates on the main location of the events but also somewhat points out the main theme of this week's adventure which is all based on chivalry and the characteristics connected with it like bravery and helping out others which we witnessed with the likes of Ash and Farfetch. It's not really the most creative focus I have seen but it pretty much brings the main elements to the point. 8 out of 10. Last but not least, animation. Animation was solid as ever. My personal main highlights being Farfetch smashing the wall, Aegis Slash dodging and parrying simultaneous attacks, and that one vital blow of Farfetch against Wickstrom's Pokemon. All done by a long time OG Pokemon animator and one of my favorites, Masaki Iwane. The only other personal highlight of mine that I sadly couldn't find was the whole detect animation with the flashing eyes and the dodging movements. Done really well, but unfortunately, I don't know who did that. But overall, great animations with no major flaws, 8 out of 10. So this episode scores a good score of 8 out of 10, with the recommendation to watch it, just for the Ash and Farfetch parts alone. Even though all the Go moments and especially everything in regards of Cypher really felt shoehorned and kinda added in the last second. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review. What is your opinion? Tell me, and just like always, I see you guys in the comments down below. Bye guys!